Okay, in this video we're going to look at how the convolution of two functions and the Laplace transform interact with each other. So let's just recall the convolution of f and g is defined via this integral. So we have the integral from 0 to t of f of tau g of t minus tau d tau. Let's also recall that the Laplace transform of a function is given by the integral from 0 to infinity of f of t e to the minus s t dt and this gives us a function of s. And so the theorem that we want to prove here is that the Laplace transform of the convolution of these functions f and g, so f star g, is equal to the product, just the normal product of two functions, of the Laplace transform of f times the Laplace transform of g. Okay. Now using the definition of the Laplace transform, we have the Laplace transform of f star g is the integral from 0 to infinity of, now we're going to put this integral inside, the, in, inside this other one, so we have the integral from 0 to t of f of tau, g of t minus tau, and now we have e to the minus st, which uh, is part of the Laplace transform, and notice we have d tau is our inner integral, and dt is our outer integral. So now the big trick here is we want to switch the order of integration. And so in order to motivate that, I'm going to draw a picture. So this is down here the t-axis, and up here we have the tau axis. And here we have the line tau equals t. And so now notice at the moment our inner integral is taking us um, from 0 to t for the tau values, and then our outer integral is taking us from t equals zero to infinity. So we're like going in this sort of order. Good, and so what we wanna do is essentially rotate that 90 degrees and we wanna go in this order. So we'll go from here out, from here out, from here out, so we wanna make lines like that. So in other words, we want to go from tau to infinity, and then again from zero to infinity, and now we've changed the bounds of integration, dt, d tau. Okay, good, because notice t is going to go from tau to infinity. Okay, and now we can just rewrite this again. So this is f of tau, g to the t minus tau, e to the minus s t, and then we have dt, d tau. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is make a change of variables. So we'll make the change of variables x equals t minus tau. And we're doing this for the innermost integral. So notice that dx equals dt, so we won't be introducing any, any sort of sign or anything because of the dt component, but then also notice when t equals tau, x equals zero, but then when t equals infinity, x also equals infinity. And then finally, notice that this is the same thing as saying uh, t equals x plus tau. Okay, great. So let's see what we get out of that. So we're going to get the integral from 0 to infinity of the integral from 0 to infinity of f of tau. So nothing's changed there. And then we have g of x. And now we can write this as e to the minus st, but that's e to the minus s. And now we have x plus tau. Good. And now we're going to have dx d tau. Okay, fantastic, um, but what's great about this is now this function in here is a function of x times a function of tau, if you look at it carefully, and uh, split this exponential up into two parts. So notice this is e to the minus sx times e to the minus s tau. Okay, good. So notice that's going to allow us to split this up to the integral from 0 to infinity of um, f of tau e to the minus s tau d tau, good, times the integral from 0 to infinity of g of x e to the minus x s dx. 
Okay, great. But now notice that's the Laplace transform of F, and that's the Laplace transform of G, and so we have uh, come to the conclusion of this theorem. Okay, good. So we're done with this proof. So now I want to look at a couple of examples of calculating inverse Laplace transforms using this. Okay, so now we're going to finish off this video by using this result to calculate an inverse Laplace transform. So let's just recall that we have the Laplace transform of F star G is the Laplace transform of F times the Laplace transform of G. So that means F star G is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of that product of those two Laplace transforms. So what we'll notice is that inside this inverse Laplace transform we have the Laplace transform of E to the 3T and then this is the Laplace transform of sine of t. Great, and then by the right hand side over there, that means that this entire inverse Laplace transform should be the convolution of e to the 3t star sine t. And so now in a previous video, I proved that the convolution is commutative, and actually it's easier to calculate in this case if we do sine t star e to the 3t. And that's because composing this t minus tau into the exponential is easier than composing it into the sine. So now notice this gives us the integral from 0 to t of sine of tau e to the 3 t minus tau d tau. Okay, and uh, also notice that we can split up this exponential and factor the e to the 3t out. So this is going to give us e to the 3t and then the antiderivative from, from 0 to t of sine of tau e to the minus 3 tau d tau. Okay, good. So now, this is a fairly lengthy integration by parts problem. I have a video on my channel where I do a very similar integration by parts problem that I'll let you guys look at if you need to. But um, in essence, what you need to do is do integration by parts twice. You'll end up back with the same integral, which you can set up an equation to solve for that integral. So in the end, you'll get the following. So this is 1 over 10, and then e to the 3t and then minus cosine t minus 3 sine t. And that's the final answer of this inverse Laplace transform.